Editing videos and titles. So you've got your brand sorted and you've got a great looking take on a Rathlos video demonstrating that you do your thing really well. It's time to edit the hell out of it. When editing, assume that everyone has a really short attention span. They're on the internet, so there's a thousand things screaming for their attention at any given second. You need to make your videos as punchy as they can be while still being clear about your brand. Always speed up the early parts of the video if nothing is happening. If you're just running around looking for the creature, or if you're taking bitter bugs to activate heroics or bombing yourself, or if you're just drinking buffs, set that section to spoil four times speed, or consider just skipping everything before you get into the zone with the creature. This is really important, because it's a great way to bore the hell out of people at the start of your video, which means that they're likely to click away from it. 30 seconds worth of bombing yourself or drinking buffs is a long time to a viewer. Speed up when you swap zones to chase a creature, and for long fights with a lot of repetition, so Lao Shan, Black Fatalis, Shingaren, consider speeding everything up after a certain point if it's just repeating. Or, cut the video and jump to the end. Make sure if you cut your videos, you put in a transition. It's quite jarring watching a video go right between sections instantly. A quick wipe effect or a quick fade effect takes two seconds to add and it looks much more professional than you need to be to do it. Say you've done some practice runs and you're ready to drop your captured video into your new flash intro. How do you know which one to take? Video content and getting a good take. This is part of branding and if, you brand, if your brand is that you're a speedrunner this might not be so relevant for you. But always remember there's someone faster than you. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but your speed records won't stand for all time. Which is why stylish content is often more important than speed. So th think of things that don't get done often. Think of monsters or, or weapon matchups that are considered poor, like Sword and Shield on Rathlos, and give that a crack. Don't just use Hammer or Bow or Bogon in every video, because those classes see a lot of action. If you use uncommon classes against uncommon monsters, it's usually more impressive than seeing another Bow vs Rajang video. If speed is not your biggest concern, then don't worry about getting a great time necessarily. Worry more about getting a good looking video. If you're fighting a creature that taunts more than usual, letting you kill it really fast, it's probably not going to be a great watch, although you might get a great time. Personally, I'd rather watch a 5 minute video versus a creature that's constantly active and get into the cut and thrust of it, compared to a 4 minute video where some masochistic creature allowed itself to be beaten and bludgeoned to death. My inspiration for making videos is absolutely a guy called Chrome Death Razor. He rarely did speedruns, but his videos were always new and they always did things that were so skillful or so new that they made you sit there open mouth going, wow. I never knew you could even do that. Aside from no hit runs and speed runs, videos that showcase inventive or new tactics are always great. Consider the impact of Naiju's Tigrex GS charge guard on the community and you'll see what I mean. Getting hit can be a contentious subject. Some people like seeing it because it makes the run more real, while there's others are perfectionists and don't like it. It's up to you what you upload, but watch it a couple of times first and make sure you're happy with how it presents your skills. Every new, every video maker has videos that took them two hours to record and get a good take on, even though the video itself is two minutes long. I sure as hell did. My Jewel Naruga 457 video took a lot of restarts. I'd restart if I didn't spawn in a decent zone, I'd restart if I screwed up an evade and got comboed, and I'd restart if I used too much ammo on the first one, etc. I could consistently kill them in five and a half minutes, but I was determined to get a sub five take on video, so I did that quest a lot until I got a good time. Don't be afraid to, t to have a few takes, and don't just use the first one you get if it's not a good one. Some of my videos are first takes, the Crimson Fatalis Ham of Ham ones is an example, but most aren't. Remember, the more practice you do on a quest, the better the recording comes out. If you want to show off your skills, then kill the monster a lot before hitting record. Your video will come out better for it. And some days, maybe because of what you had to eat that day, or maybe because you didn't sleep well the night before, you just won't play well. It happens. If you get a feeling after a few takes it's just not happening, then consider recording later to save yourself getting burnt out or frustrated. Custom quests are a tricky issue. They can be much easier to use than normal quests because you don't have to deal with monsters dezoning or deal with minions. But be careful to set the hit point values and defense modifiers correctly when making it, and be very clear that it's a custom quest, especially if there's a non-custom quest arena version already. Dealing with minions and monster movement patterns is a part of the skill of the game though, and fighting in a normal environment looks better in most cases than fighting in a small circular arena. Using heroics or adrenaline. These two skills give you a 35 or a 30% damage boost respectively for being on low health. They are widely used in videos to get faster times on creatures, but almost invariably mean death in a single hit. 
If you're going to use them, try and play as aggressively as you normally would. Watching a heroics user play extremely cautiously is a big turn off in most cases, since they could probably get a better time, which is usually why I use the skills, without them. Remember, if you attack 36% left often, 35% more damage is wasted. If you're using it because you weren't going to hit, get hit anyway, consider doing your video without armor or just doing a straight no hit run. And remember to speed up the action at the start when you're getting yourself into the right hit point range. Music and copyright. You can't please everyone all the time, but with some work, you can please most of the people most of the time. If you aren't recording in-game sound on your videos, and not everyone can or wants to, then you need something else for the watcher to hear, and music is the obvious choice. Here is the crucial rule, pick what you like. I use extreme metal on most of my videos, apart from rap or rap rock on my joke ones, and I know that some people hate it. That's okay. Not everyone likes the same things. If people really like your videos, they'll either put up with the music or they'll mute it, but you should stick to your guns and use music that you like, whether others like it or not. It doesn't matter what you like and what you use, someone else will hate it. That's just the reality of the situation. You will get trolls and haters commenting, and you know what? That's okay. You don't change based on the opinion in their heads, so just try and treat it lightly. On the positive side, lots of Monster Hunter players do like metal, and I get comments from time to time thanking me for introducing people to bands that they might not otherwise hear, and that's really gratifying. An upside to using non-mainstream music is that it's also likely to get blocked, which leads me to copyright. Copyright is a tricky issue. According to international intellectual property conventions, you have a fair dealing exemption to copyright. This means that if you're not making money off your videos, you can fairly use artists' works as background music in most countries. You will see companies like WMG ask YouTube to block audio on videos though, because they know that you're not going to sue them and get the music reinstated. This isn't the case in every country, because not every country is signed up to the right conventions like the Brussels Convention, say, on intellectual property. And some governments, Germany is a big example, are very quick to enforce these rights. Understanding what you can and can't use is important. The way audio is detected is a simple algorithm. WG employees don't actually watch every one of the 65,000 videos uploaded to YouTube daily. And you can use any song pretty much, provided that you circumvent the simple algorithm. If you download an audio editor like Audacity, you can speed up or slow down songs. Usually, 5% either way is enough to get you past the algorithm. For some famous artists, you might need to use 10%. So you've got kick-ass branding, a sweet take on a new exciting video, and you've got some kick-ass music. How do you let people know about it? Promoting your channel and playlists. There's an etiquette to getting your videos around. You can, of course, post a link to your latest video in every Monster Hunter community from here to Nantucket, but you're not likely to make many friends that way. Picking your methods of promotion is really important. Posting a new topic dedicated to your videos in a forum you regularly post in is a good idea. You can bump it with new videos which keeps it centralized and lowers the risk of negative comments from making a new thread for every video. Consider also picking your battles. You don't need to make a new thread for every video, especially if the video is not that novel. Titles for videos are also really important. Come up with a format you consistently use and you'll look more organized. For example, you could use the game, then the creature, then the time, and important notes. So, using that formula I might end up with Monster Hunter Freedom Unite, Blangonga, 5 Minutes, Feline Heroics. You can use anything you like, but including those details in some combination is important. It lets people know right away what they're going to get. Misleading people to get them to watch your stuff might get a few views, but you won't get many subscribers that way. Picking good video tags is a simple matter. Put the full game name in, plus the creature's name, include the Japanese name if you want, and then stuff like the weapon you use or if you had Adrenaline Plus 2, etc. If you open my channel on YouTube, you'll see my channel video autoplay, and make sure that you do set the video to autoplay on your channel. Don't give people the option not to watch your great work. What it is after the intro is a static image, which I've used with permission, which has icons overlaid with it, which link to my playlists. This video technique is reasonably easy to set up and it works great. It makes your channel look really professional, and it's especially good if you have a lot of videos. My roughly 80 videos are neatly categorized into six sections, which stops people from being overwhelmed if they don't know what they're looking for. Remember, the golden rule is five seconds. If people can't work it out in five seconds or less what they're trying to find, then they probably won't stay on your page. Make enjoying your content as effortless as you can and guide people to the things that they want to see. If you can't draw, find someone who can. Searching sites like DeviantArt means that you have a wealth of amazing artists available to draw on. Once you find a picture you love, contact the artist and get permission to use it and make it clear what you're asking to do with it and then you can go nuts. As long as you cross promote, so you say who the artist is from when linked to their website in your video description, most artists are happy to allow you to use their works for free. So the conclusion. Making a cool channel that people want to watch and subscribe to is going to take effort. But if you get it right and you have a brand that you enjoy working to, it will be a fun effort. 
If you guide people to your channel with a professional looking intro and a clear brand, then they are likely to subscribe to you, especially if you've demonstrated a commitment to it. I am not the best player on YouTube, certainly, but I'm one of the most subscribed. Having a successful channel isn't just about your kill times or your skills, it's about the whole package that you offer people. Having a clear name or theme or brand and being consistent are actually the most important things, more important than blistering kill times. If I look at the channels that I enjoy watching, the guys usually aren't doing things that are technically remarkable, but the channels are funny, or it's clear that effort's been put in, or there's some hook that gives people a reason to keep watching. If I'm honest, most videos I end up exiting after about a minute. Usually it's because I've already seen the video before, and you might be an expert on GS charging Tigrex, but I've seen that before. Or because the point of the video is a speedrun, and I can see from the title how fast you did it. Some of the videos I've liked the most are the newest ones. Like Lemon Tea doing the Banquet of the Warrior Gods quest naked, or Chisel swearing at monsters with his Irish accent as he gets trolled by a Giganox, or Chrome Death Razor showing attack opportunities on Rajang I didn't even know existed. Success is ephemeral. If you follow all these suggestions, it won't guarantee that you'll do well. That's about luck, but it will give you a great platform to launch from and a certain base level of success. And remember, ultimately, we make our own luck through being well prepared. I hope this was useful to you all, and I'm happy to take questions on it if you want to check some stuff in the comments. Miserion, out.